Welcome into the original Gangsters podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter edition. We're going to go out to Queens and talk about the state of the Truccio crew. Um, a lot of news has been coming out over the last week. <clears throat> we can't claim to be having broken any of that news. We're going to break some new news, piggybacking off of that news. But uh, Jerry Capace and Gangland News uh, was able to get the scoop that uh, very, very respected, very feared Gambino mob skipper Ronnie one Arm Truccio was released from prison uh, on a compassionate, did 21 years on a life sentence. Um, on just a side note before, I, I don't want to go too deep down this rabbit hole, but on just a side note for people that are and I know there's been a lot of this over the last couple of years with the First Step Act getting a lot of organized crime guys out of prison, a lot of them getting out of like life sentences, a lot of them having killed lots of people, and they seem to be getting out at a higher clip than other guys that are not mob murderers um, or, or really even mob guys that aren't connected to a lot of murders. They're having trouble getting out. So the only thing I'll say is when people wonder, you know, what's the rhyme or reason? There is no rhyme or reason. It's 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 a crapshoot. It really depends on timing. It depends on what judge you have. Maybe you get a new judge. Maybe you've been in there 25, 30 years and your judge died and there's a new judge in there. So it's it's very like spin the wheel. And if you're lucky and your your guys like the Gemini twins, uh, the Lucchese's, or guys like Ronnie Ronnie One Arm, you you can be suspected of multiple murders. You can be in life sentences and find your way out. Uh, I digress. Uh, so uh, Ronnie One Arm got out. He's allegedly uh, infirmed, according to uh, Jerry, and uh, is in a wheelchair. Is blind, uh, and, and the BOP medical staff couldn't care for him properly so uh he's coming or he came home i think this this past weekend and he's going to be staying in westchester county um i think west harrison he's going to be living with his son ronnie um but he has another son alphonse and that's going to segue us into what's going on with the truccio crew in 2024 heading into 2025 that's where my breaking news is going to come into play here so after uh, the news broke last week about Ronnie One Arm, I started doing my due diligence, and we're reporting here at OG Pod as well as our companion web magazine, um, Gangster Report, that a former rising star in the Gambinos who has now officially risen. Um, it took him a little bit longer than I think some people figured, but there was a about an eight-year prison sentence in there. Uh, you know, everybody knows the WWE and the uh, blockbuster movie superstar, The Rock. Well, the Gambinos, the Gambino crime family out of Queens has their own rock. Mike Roccaforti, uh, The Rock. He, uh, There's a picture here, him and actually Alphonse Truccio um, about 15 years ago, I think. Um, they uh, they were best friends back then. And um, I'm glad we, we, we get a picture here with all the kids. Uh, Faces blurred out. We don't want to put any uh, minors on on blast here. Uh, so I want to just give an update. And it looks like in the last 18 to 20, 22 months, I'm told Roccaforte has slid into the capo position of that old Truccio crew um, and that he re replaces, at least on a day-to-day -day shot calling basis, Tommy the Monk Sassano. Um, Sassano replaced Alphonse Truccio, who replaced his dad. I know it's confusing. Uh, but Alphonse Truccio, when he became a capo in 2004, 2005, after his dad got locked up, was the youngest um, captain in the five families in New York City. He was in his early 30s. He's now 47. I don't want to get too much into the reasons why Alphonse is no longer in charge of that crew. That could be an entire couple of hours. I'll just say that 
if you if you you know follow this stuff, you've probably heard about um, some type of altercation between Alphonse and uh, Jojo Carozo, who was one of his dad's mentors, and uh, uh, Bobby Vernacci, who was on the uh, ruling commission. They they all went not, not the commission, the ruling panel at one point for the Gambinos. Uh, they were all indicted in a, in a case in um, the early 2010s, and I guess there was some type of defense strategy meeting, and Alphonse Truccio was upset that he was being impugned for narcotics trafficking, and he's like, I was never narcotics trafficking. It was you guys that were narcotics trafficking, and it got heated, and words were said, and I think people had to get in between people and uh, it ends up with Alphonse uh, losing the capo spot, allegedly. So Tommy the Monk Sassano took it over. And this is going to bring us into the second part of our reporting here. Not only uh, are we told that Mike Roccaforti is the new capo, I don't know if he's acting or official. Tommy Monk Sassano, I'm told, is still keeping the title. So I would guess this is that Roccaforti is now acting, but he's running things day to day. Um, but I'm also told that Mike Roccaforti, he's only 47. He's a young guy, too. Um, and we, when we were talking about him being dubbed a rising star, it was back in the 2000s when he was in his 20s. A lot of people were, were talking about how he was kind of being fast tracked to, to the upper echelon of the family. He went down in that 2011 bus, was locked up uh, until like eight, 2008 or nine. And uh, the second part of this breaking news is that I'm told that all of the consternation over the last year about Joey Merlino and Philadelphia and who's the boss and, and Merlino's podcasting social media endeavors that we've been talking about reporting, telling how the... New York families were upset with Philadelphia and there's been an, you know, an endless string of meetings and sit downs. Um, I'm told that Mike Roccaforti is playing, I don't know if I would say a big role, but he's playing a role in these or has played a role in these negotiations or meetings with Philadelphia um, to deal with the Merlino fallout. And again, I don't, we don't need to talk about that here. We've we've talked about it ad nauseum. Jerry Capace reported a couple of weeks ago or a month or two ago that uh, I think it was a month or two ago at this point. Um, in fact, I think it might have been it might be three months now uh, that that Merlino has been shelved because of the podcasting and uh, a lot of back and forth. The Philadelphia guys coming to meet with the Gambinos and Genovese, Gambinos at least once in the last eight months going to Philadelphia. And I'm told that Roccaforti is one of the people that are facilitating these meetings and has actually attended some of these meetings. Um, I'm told that Roccaforti was at the meeting that we reported on uh, in October of 23, where, where Merlino met with Lorenzo Menino, who's the boss of the Gambinos, and told him that, the pot, that don't worry, the podcast is not going to have anything to do with the mafia. There's going to be no war stories. There's going to be no anecdotes. It's just going to be me and my co-host, Little Snuff, um, talking football and sports gambling. That never really came to fruition. And I think that was kind of the final straw. Uh, they moved Merlino out of the boss's chair, put Georgie Borghese in, who had been his acting boss, had been around forever, had been his conciliary. They grew up together. Uh, Roccaforti was introduced to all these uh, Philadelphia guys before he went to prison. Back in 2010, he was caught on a recorded, uh, in a, in a sit-down that was recorded at a restaurant in New Jersey um, meeting. He was with Lorenzo Menino, as well as John Gambino, who at the time was the boss, um, or one of the bosses of that family. And he met with Joe Legambi, Anthony Stano, Joe Scoops Licata, um, so he had that introduction a while ago. Then he did prison time, probably made more connections. And uh, I'm told that he's facilitating. And what that means is I think he's present. He's helping do the go-between communications about where and when. And then I'm told he's also been somebody that when 
the Philadelphia guys come into New York, uh, Roccaforti kind of arranges for them for the meeting. And it's not as simple as it sounds like, oh, we're coming into New York and we're going to meet. Well, that meeting, get logistically, it's not like you and I go into a meeting. There's there's like a like a like a maze of like different cars and different routes and doing whatever you can to to shake tails and you might have to go in three or four different cars uh, before you reach the meeting and Rock of Fourteen I'm told is the one that's kind of been overseeing that stuff so I'm not sure what and I don't want to speculate on it uh, I'm not sure what Ronnie what's going on with Ronnie One Arm coming out I'm not sure what this means for Alphonse um, I'm told that. You know, Alphonse and Mike Roccaforti were best friends for quite a while. Uh, and then there was some type of fallout. I'm guessing it had something to do with his his uh, getting his, Alphonse getting his stripes pulled. I've heard mixed reactions, on, or not mixed reactions. I've heard um, conflicting reports at where those two are in 2024. Some people have said they're still not talking. Some people have said to me, they're still not speaking and the beef is still active. And other people have told me that that things are uh, copacetic. now. So again, I don't know. And I don't know what, what's going to happen with Ronnie One Arm. Again, I've heard some people say he's not as sick as everybody thinks and that expect him to be underboss in the next year or two, replacing Lenny Di Maria. Again, I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying I heard that from some people that I that I trust. Um, but if you believe what Truccio is saying, He's too sick to do anything. Um, what this means for Alphonse, I don't know. Alphonse is only 47, 48, so he's got a lot of time left. Uh, I think he owns a restaurant now in Long Island. So we'll keep tabs on all, on, on all this stuff for you, but just wanted to report about the, the status of the Truth Show crew um, and my, Mike Roccaforte's role in it. So the Rock of Gibraltar is now the Rock of the Gambinos. Please Continue to like, share, and subscribe the Original Gangsters podcast. Spread the word that we're breaking news here, uncovering the underworld 24-7, one city, one region, one country at a time. I'm Scott Bernstein, OG Pod. I'm out. Mm -hmm.